everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I picked up this Rocket Store from High Point the other day because it's one of those toaster-style hard drive adapters, but it is Thunderbolt, so presumably we'll get better speed out of this. There are a lot of other devices from many manufacturers in this form factor, and basically what you do is take a hard drive, whether it's a desktop or notebook drive, and just kind of pop it uh, in there like you would a piece of toast, and uh, usually uh, it'll mount on your computer desktop, and you can use it like any other hard drive. So it gives you some really uh, great convenience for times when you really want to swap drives in and out, and I do that a lot for my video recording. Uh, there isn't much to this. You have two drive slots, so you can use them at the same time. Uh, there are SATA uh, 6 connectors in there, so uh, it just lines up perfectly with the SATA connectors on the back of your hard drive when you put it in. It has two little eject buttons here to pop the drives out when you're done with them. And on the back, you have a single Thunderbolt uh, port, and fortunately, it doesn't have the pass-through. So uh, if you have a lot of devices, this will have to be at the end of the chain. And that's uh, a criticism I've seen from a lot of other reviewers, and it's certainly valid criticism. It also doesn't come with a Thunderbolt cable, so you'll need to uh, go out and buy one of those cables. They usually run for about $20 or $30 a piece, even for short cables. So uh, two, little, two little gotchas there. Uh, but that's pretty much it. We're going to uh, connect the power to it here and uh, get this drive mounted on our desktop and do some benchmarks real quick. So I've got uh, two solid state drives that I use for my video work here. So we're going to pop both of these in. So let's take a look at some benchmarks. We're first going to hit one of the drives individually, and then I've set up a little RAID striped array that will allow us to bond these two solid state drives together and presumably get faster speed. So let's pop over to my Blackmagic speed test. It is my benchmark utility of choice. This really measures uh, a very consistent uh, video-like write to the disk. And as you can see, we're in the 220, 230 megabyte per second range, which is the speeds I usually see when the drive is plugged in on its own. And then I've got these great reads of about uh, 427 megabytes per second. So we're definitely getting uh, the solid state speeds on there. Uh, but the next thing we're going to do now is connect to that little RAID array that I set up. And presumably, we should see double the performance. And we Get, we just about get there. So let's take a look at that. Uh, now we're seeing much better reads. You know, we're in the 400 megabyte and change territory. Um, the, the, sorry, the writes and then the reads um, kind of top out around 650 megabytes per second or so. It's about five gigabits per second. So um, we're kind of hitting the, the tail end of probably that SATA controller that's inside the device. Now, in fairness, this is not a RAID device, so it's really not uh, designed to be used in the way that we're using it, but it's a great way to test really the maximum bandwidth on there. We should be seeing you know, maybe another 100 megabytes or 200 megabytes or so per second in read speeds if we were really getting uh, the Thunderbolt kind of uh, speeds that we would expect. But five gigabits is certainly nothing to, uh, to sneeze at, so I think that's a, a pretty good result, especially for something that really isn't designed as a RAID controller. However, I did run into a couple of problems with it. Uh, it is occasionally sending my Mac into what's called a kernel panic, which is the equivalent of the Windows blue screen of death. So that's a, that's a problem right there. I also had some issues when I eject the drive and try to put it back in. It's not always consistently remounting the drive, and I often have to unplug it and plug it back in for it to recognize those disks. So it's really not working well as a hot swap device, certainly not as well as you would expect it to be given its design. So, you know, I, I think if I had to rate it on a scale of five stars, probably three and a half or four, it's certainly very fast. It certainly will live up to uh, the Thunderbolt speeds that you would expect. However, the glitches with the drive mounting and the glitches with uh, sending my Mac into no less than three kernel panics tonight uh, is a bit of a problem. Now, I was swapping drives out and doing some, uh, you know, some things with it, but uh, nonetheless, I feel like it's, uh, it's a little rough around the edges. This is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching.